What are three ways to stop over trading so you can make more money in 2023? Yes, I think I was talking to a brother earlier and he was like, hey, I'm having an issue with over trading. Really good trader. He has some amazing entries. Um, so number one, you have to pick a person, ideally your significant other um, or someone that you're really close to and share your results every single day. Now, traders, we do like this when we have a bad trade. We'll be like, I ain't going to show that one. Show all of your trades for the next 90 days to a significant other or person that you care about dearly. That's number one. Number two, um, one thing that helped me on my journey that helped me like catch fire, I began to post my results on social media for the month, quarter, and year. So a few years ago, um, when I posted my yearly result and yearly return, that helped keep me accountable because anybody can have a great week or a great month, but year over year gains are really tough. And then number three, I've said this before, but for every time that you have a loss in your account, you need to pick a person that you turn that money over to as well. So let's say you're, you're trading options or you're trading futures. And let's say you lose $2,600 in a day. Guess what? Got to pick an accountability partner and also pay them 2,600 bucks. I know the comments on YouTube are not going to be favorable, but when you got to turn over to your bay a loss, like your loss report card and pay up to 26, trust me, you will stop trading uh, more than you should. And it will give you an accountability partner that will help you. So when I was, uh, like when Xander was first born, I would put my win loss record on the refrigerator on a dry race board to Melissa um, every week. And she was hoping that I would lose. So I had to pay the other part of the money up. And then the wins went good because I'm like, I'm not going to pay you twice, yo. So um, later in life, I ended up paying twice. But I'm so honored to because you're an amazing mom. Thank you so much for being incredible and allowing me to have a child with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm Grammy ready. Yo, Listen, what Drake said. So, hey, this is this is this is a, a question because a lot of times when we hear overtrade, people think that they're overtrading the the same stock, right? And that could mean like, yo, I'm doing mm -hmm. 13 different different companies. I'm invest, but that yeah. could also mean like I might just be overtrading the same stock, right? Like I might be taking Absolutely. too many trades of the same stock. In fact, one of the things we heard yesterday, and we were asking a gentleman like, what do you trade? And he said, I only trade one thing. But that doesn't mean that you don't overtrade, right? So can you like but you can take fifteen trades in one day? Yeah, like ideally on a monthly basis, you shouldn't take more than, I mean, eight trades maximum. If you really want to have a high win rate, four would be great. One trade a week is amazing. Uh, fellas, put in chat. Less is more. And I said on the call yesterday. I know it feels like when I come on and say, take four trades. I'm trying to keep you from getting the bag. What normally happens is like you have six or seven trades that work well. And then trade eight through 14 goes incredibly horrible. And now you're trying to average down like crazy to make up for the losses. And then you end up breaking your laptop and, and your mouse. Any of y'all threw your laptop against the wall or mouse before? <laughs> <laughs> now you got to put up drywall and get a new mouse. Less is more. And then once you have control of those, like uh, even if we play on ball, like, well, let's take it to Mahomes and, and, and Jalen Hurt. Like last time, Joe, you still shout out to Joe Budden. You still ain't paid me my five hundred from when Brady beat Mahomes last time, and we won charades. Did he pay up that bet? <laughs> no. Shout out to no, Joe. Go check out the episode. Anyway, Corey, what up? <laughs> um, but even then, like I'd rather have a player that's incredibly reliable that gets slow gains and chips away. Like Brady's graded like four to seven yards. Mahomes scrambles better out of the pocket, bigger arm. You can argue a better quarterback, but in those tight moments. Are you going to follow the same routine and system over and over and over again? So in your trading, you want to be very methodical. I know it's more exciting to run off 700, 400% in a year, but I'd rather get 60, 70, 80, 90% year over year on my trading and have stability. Yeah. And be okay with that. Right? Like be, be yes. okay with 20%. Be okay with 30%. Like those are great. Those are amazing gains, right? Obviously everybody mm -hmm. wants to hit the grand slam, 500%, 600%, but if you if you're doing 30%, 20%, that's pretty good. Like you should pat yourself on the back and figure out what strategy that you use to get that type of gain and keep implementing that. Stick to that. And then the bigger gains will come. All the, put this in chat, all the big gains come from discipline. There's at least maybe 15 people I know that can probably trade better than me month over month and maybe over a 3 month period. Oh, 6 months. Hard pressed. And I've had my best, like last year was my best year trading. 
um I'm trying to get to how I want to jinx myself, but I'm trying to get to like a place where I have like two years with no losses. Like I haven't had a loss for like nine, ten months, but I've taken way less trades. Like I'm doing maybe four or five max a month. And I'm still looking at it all day, every day. And it's hard not to push that button. Like I'd be wanting to hit buy bid so bad on Ninja Trader, but it's better to hit like one solid trade for the week. What size and for a bigger target than it is to like scout your life away. There you have it. Well, Hit the like yeah. button. This is live. Yes, please. We are live in the flesh um, for Market Mondays. We flew in just for Market Mondays. We was in Puerto Rico. We forgot to mention that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shout, shout out, out to, to Rachel. Rachel Rogers. And shout out to our Puerto shout Rican to family, Travel PR. Um, and shout out to your satchel. <laughs> Not a purse, a satchel. Yeah. Shout out <laughs> to Palomino <laughs> Beach. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 man. Puerto, Puerto I want to go back to Mexico Puerto so bad. Puerto Rico the vibe, man. Um, you know, it's it's always good energy. Newfound respect for Puerto yes. Rico. Yes, yes. Yeah, Shout out to the real place. PR travel. They held us down out there. This is true. Um, That's incredible. So let's talk about Badu has followed Open AI's footsteps and mm-hmm. has created a bot similar to Chat GPT. So there, there's some competition for Chat GPT. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. So first, we gotta tell them what Badu is, and I, I told this story maybe in the early episodes of, of of Market Mondays. But Badu, the best way to describe it is the Chinese version of Google. And I remember I was reading like a Business Week one, in, in 2007, and I was like, Oh, Google, Google. Okay, well, what's better than Google? Let's find another Google. And, and, and the company Badu came up, and then uh, I invested in it. And I uh, got scared, got nervous because the market pulled back around 2008. And uh, mm-hmm. Badu went on a tear. And I think they split twice. I think they did seven to one, then they did 30 to one. And that was one of those lessons. I'm like, oh my gosh, had I just been disciplined enough. But like I said, you gotta go through things to understand things at a, at a greater scale. Absolutely. So Badu is a Chinese version of Google. What they've done is they've created a bot, um, and the, which has an AI tool, which will enable Badu's main search services to allow users to have conversation style results. And so imagine rather than typing a search, you're actually just saying it and the AI is telling you back the answers. So kind of almost like a hands-free situation, uh, which is interesting because, you know, ChatGPT hasn't created, they haven't gotten together with Google, the largest uh, search engine. They're trying to do it with Bing, which like we, we, we spoke about, I'm not sure how many people use Bing or even know what Bing is. Um, so they, they, I mean, they're, they're ahead of the curve in that sense. Obviously, the, the population of China is much larger than ours, and the user base could be, but it's an interesting proposition. Um, I, I'm sure that the, 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 the good folks over at Microsoft are watching this very intently. When you invest $10 billion, you, you want to know who the competition is, and you want to know what they're doing. So I'm sure we'll see something uh, f- from the, the good folks at Microsoft about this. You think Baidu is a competitor now? I don't know if it's a competitor, only from the standpoint of the regulation from Baidu. Obviously, we, we you know, if the Chinese government kind of controls what is allowed to be searched, which obviously doesn't yeah. make it as open and as free as what we have here in Google. Um, so from that standpoint, I can't really see it as a competitor. I think, uh, so like, for example, when Ford, uh, their, their greatest invention was the formation of the assembly line. Then Mercedes had to follow suit and other companies did. I think this is just an extension of the automation to remove the workforce in 2030. Now, of course, with all the noise that it's making, I would say that it's smart for Baidu to make their own. I don't know if it's going to have a tremendous impact on um, on the stock overall, even though Baidu has been pushing up a little bit at the top of this year. Anero. Um, but I do think... We're going to see every company make their own well every major top 10 tech company like make their own version of but i think clearly like even with the iphone space chat gpt is the iphone of ai right now baidu's version would be an android android still has some value shout out to all the android users i'm learning not to alienate the audience um but chat gpt is a clear leader i think we're just seeing more automation to to drive the workforce down and get to that goal. Uh, and I, I said it on a, on a chat yesterday, but even on Amazon's front, they need to get to a place where they let off like total 24 to 26% of their workforce for the stock to go back up. Please be mindful. I don't think that they've ushered in these 
automation systems by accident at scale while every tech company like look, look at it like this every you don't think that all the people in tech was getting drinks together and was like yo we should just lay off a whole bunch of people and find a way to replace them four or five years ago and then slowly usher it in after COVID, after making the great resignation thing a big pr move this is planned this is uh controlled chaos if you will yeah. and we got and the 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 functionality for it has increased i think a lot of times i mean especially when we discuss it and the people we talk to about it we look at it from how can it create you know word documents and things of that of that nature and i was talking mm-hmm. to b shout out to b uh and he was telling me you know they have the first world the, the world's first robot lawyer and it was created <laughs> from ai and using chat B, gbt um yeah because if you figure like from a legal standpoint i mean it's, it's, it's pretty much a lot of documentation and so if you tell the case and it, it kind of create a defense for it and so it starts out as a legal assistant but then when you see re- the reports that you know chat gbd just passed the bar mm-hmm. <laughs> i mean it's getting scary yeah, like think about that right interesting times man um also i just posted on on Alicia's instagram page an hour ago I don't know if you saw it, but the, uh, the, 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 the melting, the melting. So scientists have created a shape shifting robot that can melt its way out of a cage. It's on our, our Instagram page. They have the video of it. And um, yeah, they took a metal uh, with low melting point and uh, they put magnetic particles in it and they made a melting robot. Now, this is interesting because obviously this can this can like slip in and out of different situations. So they 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 have <laughs> a diagram of how it can actually uh, go into the body and uh, take out like um, cancerous cells and different things of that nature. But it's literally a, a robot that's solid, and then it can be melted, and then it can, can be solid again. Um, like yeah, Terminator? Man. That's interesting. Yeah, Terminator, exactly. Like, like Terminator, Terminator 2? Yep. Like, exactly. Like the Terminator. Everything is always a foreshadowing. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. It's like the Terminator. You need to go look at our, our robot Terminator in the state. Well, the thing about it is movies. anything, if you ever want to predict what's going to happen in the future, watch watch movies. Because it's Absolutely. like all of these movies, A, somebody has to be able to think about it. So if somebody can have a, an idea of it, that means that it's going to become possible at some point in time. Yeah. And um, movies are usually a good indicator of what is to come in the future so um yeah terminator 2 is exactly it's actually very similar to that um and you know they have this is a micro robot but if they can do it with a micro robot then they're going to be at some point they probably can now do it with a robot that's six feet tall right have like robot that's six feet tall and then can melt into liquid and they can go underneath a door and then become a robot again my graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop, backdrop, <laughs> a mic drop, backdrop, backdrop. <laughs>